Hello everyone, I'm Jin Liu, a PhD student from University of Wisconsin Medicine. I'm going to present skill and performance in the valve system semi-microkernel. This is a joint work with Anthony Yifan Chenhao in Wisconsin, Sudarshan from Rutgers, and my advisors Andrew and Ramsey. These days, modern storage devices have made substantial progress. Precisely, the excess latency have come down to the several microsecond level. Therefore, the kernel storage stack faces the same kilomicrosecond problem as other field. Look at the graph, the raw device access takes only around 6.5 microseconds, whereas accessing the device through the kernel file system nearly double the latency, which naturally leads to the question as how to close the hardware software performance gap in a storage stack. Looking at the literature, we can see two categories of work to tackle this problem. The first type is library-based approach, where libraries are capable of accessing the device in the application address space, reducing the overhead in device access path. However, exporting the device to the untrusted applications complicates the device permission management, isolation, and sharing. An opposite direction is to move the entire file system into the device. Despite the performance potential, those works generally assume device has better computing capability and may be limited by hardware constraint. Instead, our approach would return centralized our multiplexing as opposed to the library-based approach, thus taking a simpler avenue to support isolation and sharing between application. Meanwhile, we rely on minimal and more realistic assumption of the device, that is, a microsecond level device that adhere to the NVMe protocol. In this work, we adopt file system semi microkernel approach. Immediate question is what is a semi microkernel? It is a partial or free OS subsystem that runs on the user level process. But unlike the traditional microkernels, a semi microkernel is semi in the sense that it works in tandem with the monolithic kernel that's coexisting and collaborating with other kernel components. PyroWorks have explored the semi microkernel approach in networking domain, and the recently available user level device drivers make it possible for us to investigate such approach for file system. There are many benefits for file system semi microkernels. First, the development and deployment of velocity. Kernel development and deployment are generally slow, whereas more developing efforts and tooling can be easily utilized for user level file system. And with modern performance but divergent devices, velocity become even more important. Second, contrary to the traditional wisdom that microkernel suffers from large overhead, the semi microkernel can be carefully specialized for device access and optimized solely for one single OS subsystem, the valve system, thus realizing good performance. And more importantly, in modern multiple computer, the file system semi microkernel can scale independently from the applications by decoupling the execution contact from the application threads, leading to better performance in a scale scenario. Lastly, compared with high performance library based approaches, a file system semi microkernel avoids the complexity from exposing devices to the untrusted applications. Building a high performance file system semi microkernel has several challenges. First, the base performance. Two techniques are practically important in this regard. The efficient inter-process communication between the user application and the file system process, and the well-optimized device access. These two can still the main execution for on-disk workload, thus they probably need rocket level performance. More challenges come from the fact that file system workloads are essentially dynamic. For example, we have first application runs on-disk random read workload, then it comes at a pen intensive workload, followed by a disk bounded scan. At this moment, we may find one call is not sufficient to extract the free device bandwidth while performing request processing simultaneously. And the semi microkernel does need one more call to utilize the device. Later on, a bridge workload correctly access some hotkeys, stressing the request processing capacity of file system, which requires to use one more call to handle this burst. When the burst ends, we want to reduce the call number for better CPU efficiency. Basically, the key challenge here is to smoothly handle the dynamicity and heterogeneity of application demand with reasonable CPU resources. In this work, 
We built UFS, a file system semi-micro kernel for performance and scalability from scratch. UFS is a fairly functional file system with crash consistency support. It carefully partitions in-memory and on-disk data structures to enable concurrent access without locking. It also dynamically partitions inodes to file system threads for load balancing. Finally, UFS designs an algorithm to determine the number of file system calls according to runtime demand. Through a set of experiments, we show that UFS has good base performance and excellent scalability. For example, UFS delivers up to 4 access throughput compared to ext 4 for level DB. In the rest of this talk, I will cover UFS architecture and its key design, then I'd present evaluation and finally conclude. We now take a look at the basic architecture of UFS and show in the graph. We have a file system that runs in the user space process called UServer. UServer directly accesses the storage device via NVMe command in its own address space. The device driver employs pooling such that your server never needs to block for I.O. The worker also manages the pin memory for DMA transfer and organizing and block graph cache. All the applications will connect the file system through ULib, which provides POSIX API support. The library also provides this based caching for file content and open files to avoid unnecessary IPC in the reading parts. Any modification will disable the read list like write and unlink. UFS ensures security protection by forcing the initial authentication to go through the host OS kernel but avoid any subsequent kernel involvement. We leverage CPU cache to cache transfer between ULIB and UServer as a communication channel where each file system call becomes a message of cache like signs. For better protection, each application has its own message written to a single worker. We also have data pages that are shared for the data transfer between the ULIB and the U server. With the increasing demand from applications, the file system in more calls, such that U server is a multi-threaded file system service. Note that once it becomes active, each worker will occupy the entire call. When we have multiple workers, U server aims for scalable design, specifically avoid sharing, locking, and blocking. We carefully design the data structures to be private to each worker, like the buffer cache bitmap. To avoid synchronization overhead at the server side, multiple workers will not share a message when connecting to one application. The communication between workers is also done by message passing. To realize the high performance and scalable semi microkernel, UFS addressed several key problems through its design. First, for scalability goal, we adopt shared nothing architecture to boost the data parallelism. UFS divides file system states and data into threads. A natural question is what's the granularity? We choose inode such that to support this data parallelism, we introduce runtime inode ownership. As discussed before, the file system workloads are dynamic, spatially and temporarily. Thus, UFS must be able to dynamically partition data, which requires a mechanism and policy support. And so we design the dynamic load management accordingly. The load management has a load balancing component to rebalance inode and another call allocation algorithm to decide number of calls to use. It's worth noting that UFS as a semi micro kernel covers more than a traditional kernel file system, essentially reconstructs the whole stack efficiently. For instance, UFS needs to be quite consistent as kernel file system and it also needs other key generic file system features for security. In some component, we carefully design specific structures to be shared across workers and ensure not blocking access of those structures to realize the level of parallelism we aim for. The parallelism granularity we choose is the inode, and we call it runtime inode ownership. When UFS is running, each call will be granted exclusive ownership of a group of inodes. The picture illustrates its ownership by a directory tree. At runtime, these three inodes are assigned to worker 1, and worker 2 holds ownership of these four inodes. We decouple the namespace and the ownership such that the files in one directory can locate onto different calls. For instance, in the picture, worker 2 and worker 3 both own the inode from one directory. Note that currently UFS adopts an asymmetric scheme to partition inodes, where a primary worker, worker 0, is in charge of all the directory inodes and also serve as the default owner of all the file inodes. The primary worker is the central help to coordinate the inode reassignment protocol, and the rest of the threads are secondary workers and can handle all the file operations. 
To handle dynamic load changes and balance load across calls, UFS has a separate load management thread. The load management thread periodically collects load stands from each worker, computes the high-level load balancing plan, that is, decide each worker's targeting load goal, and inform worker the design load goal to achieve. For example, load management thread may tell worker 0 to shift 50% of its load to worker 1. Another responsibility of load management thread is to decide the number of calls to use in a wake-up or shutdown calls. The realization of load management requires each worker to invoke inode reassignment mechanism to shift load between calls. Given load goal from load management thread, each worker tries to meet it by deciding which inodes to be reassigned according to its local stance. This is the basic framework for load management. Load management thread runs modularized algorithm for two decisions to make. Our scaling algorithm is decoupled into two composable components. The load balance algorithm aims to minimize the congestion on each call and get maximum performance given fixed number of calls. Another call allocation algorithm takes care of CPU efficiency and decides the number of calls of your server. We decouple the two algorithms by using load balancing as a black box. In each monitoring window, the call allocation algorithm emulates the load balancing result in the three conditions, ending one call, not change the call number, and remove one call. By comparing the online emulation result with the configurable CPU utilization goal, load managing thread decides which plan to go with. Thus, in single decision, the call number can only change by one, improving the robustness of load management. UFS carefully designs no blocking shared data structures for performance. The entry cache is traditionally a kernel VFS feature and impacts the performance of all path based operations. UFS exploits industry quality log free data structures to realize a single writer and multi reader entry cache, which is also used for permission checking. On any directory modification, the primary as the owner of all directories will remove the item from the entry cache. Such that all the secondary cannot perform reading of the parse, and then a following retry of the parse toward the primary ensure the correctness. Crash consistency is essential to a file system. In line with the inode ownership design, UFS enables each worker to initialize journal transactions independent for the inodes it owns. We use a global logic journal design that only requires a minimal critical session when allocating the journal box in the circuit buffer. And our evaluation shows this design adding little overhead to in-memory writing parts while offering maximum parallelism for journaling. In our evaluation, we show that UFS offers good single-threaded base performance and performs well as a multi-threaded microkernel compared with EXE4 through set of microbenchmarks and microbenchmarks. We design benchmark suite to measure the dynamic scaling of UFS and finally demonstrate that UFS can perform and scale well with real applications by running level DB and YCSB workload. I will cover the co allocation experiments and present the real application experiment in this talk. For more detailed results, please check our paper. Let's look at an example on the changing workload. What happens when you server dedicate one worker for each application, which will offer the maximum performance? In this case, we have eight applications of different workloads starting to issue file system requests one after another by one second delay. And then for the application load the load and stop accessing the file system. Next, the rest of the application load the load and finally stop issue file system request. The effective CPU utilization of each of the user calls changes and is often much lower than 100%. Instead of using eight user calls, UFS will dynamically determine the appropriate number of calls, and we use this allocating one worker per application as the maximum performance to compare in our load balancing and call allocation experiments. By using dynamic load management, we can see from this graph that under the same eight application workload, UFS changes the number of calls when the load increases and decreases. Use up to six calls while achieving 88% throughput of the maximum. We design a call allocation benchmark which contains eight different workloads. We change one factor by control steps along the time. For example, 
change the request size, change the access frequency of file subset to generate the data skew. The left graph shows the normalized throughput and the right bar chart shows the average number of calls used by U server. We can see UFS deliver over 90% performance compared with the maximal and importantly control the number of calls as needed. Because each workload contains 6 clients, the 100% performance will need 6 calls in the right graph, while UFS uses only 2.2 to 4.7 on average. Finally, we run UFS with level DB with 2 loading workload and 5 by CSB workload. The dotted lines show the performance when using EXT4. We can see with increasing number of clients along the x-axis, EXT4 does not scale well because of the scalability bottleneck like in journal and device success. We have verified that further increasing the number of clients will not bring much benefit. Instead, we see performance degradation in several cases. Compared with EXT4, UFS has good base performance and much better scalability in all the workloads. For example, up to 4.6 in sequential load and 1.88 in YCSBF. We also show the maximum number of calls used by UFS here, indicating our load managing is able to adapt CPU usage according to file system workload. Thus, we believe decoupling and scaling file system independently from the application bring large performance benefit. To conclude, we present UFS, a file system semi-micro kernel, which designs for device performance delivery and scalability. UFS demonstrates that semi-microkernel approach works well for file system, enabling flexible scaling to match workload need. Across a range of micro benchmark and application workload, UFS perform and scale well. In some cases, UFS outperform EXT4 by large margin on the high demand. Moreover, a completely user space file system semi microkernel like UFS enables us to quickly integrate our prototype ideas like the device specific optimizations and application oriented customization. Our UFS and the benchmarks are publicly available. Please check it out if you are interested. Thanks for watching.